Sorry, we're a little late. We're going to teach you guys a word. There's a word <laughs> for what we were today. We were oh. cavalier, mm. which means that you don't pay enough attention to something. You're a little bit like, that It'll show will fine. start on time. I don't fine. have to do anything. I don't have to put Jasper to bed now. I can do it 30 seconds before 1 o'clock. Uh, I don't have to get the live streaming set up. It'll take care of itself. Yeah. When you're cavalier, you're a little bit too casual. You're taking certain things for granted. You're not putting the hard work in that your viewers deserve. Yes. You deserve better. You we didn't apologize, get apologize. But you know but what? But you did learn a good word, which is... Cavalier. Cavalier is yes. just such a, it has such a good. When it's time for dinner is. tonight and, this and your means. family says, wash your hands before dinner and please don't wear a ripped t-shirt. And you're like, whatevs. That's being a little too cavalier too about the cavalier. situation. Yes. When your parents or grandparents or Uncle Joe ask you to wash your hands and wear an intact t-shirt to dinner, you should say, I will do that because it's both appropriate and hygienic. And not be all cavalier about exactly. it, okay? Sometimes exactly. it's appropriate to be cavalier. Sometimes we worry too much about things. Yes. All right? That's true. It's Robbie okay would appreciate to be cavalier. It if Matthew, if Matthew had a, a little bit more cavalier. Yes. All right. There's your vocabulary lesson that wouldn't have happened if we'd been on time. If so we had been thank less you. less cavalier. Wait, now, I'm going to stop cavalier. Oh. We've got a lot to accomplish yes. today. Okay. We're going to dive right into it. Robbie, I expect you to behave with alacrity from now on. Oh, that's... Alacrity that's means an that excellent SAT you word. are jumping to it yes. with a certain positive energy yes. and vigor and yes. speed. All right? Um, so, yeah, go ahead. If you don't know what the SAT is, it's a test that sometimes some places make you take uh, before you go to college. So, and... He, he was getting impatient. Oh, well, impatient. we're here. We're here. All right. Uh, alacrity was actually on my SAT. No way! Exam. Did you get it right or wrong? I got it right. Good work. Because because your dad taught you lots of words. Because Bob was, vo no, values I, vocabulary. No, I I had taken a, a test, a, a preview, a prep, to, a prep, prep mm -hmm. test. Mm -hmm. I had gotten one of those prep books. I took all the questions, and alacrity was one that I never got. Here's here's my right. recommendation, you guys. Mm -hmm. Read as much as you can. Yes. And when you encounter words you don't know, look yes. them up. Look them up because the more words you know. Or just ask somebody. Or have them look it that's up. That's the equivalent of looking it up. Mm -hmm. Learn what the word means. The more words you mean, first of all, the, the better you'll do on tests like the you SAT. Know. Yes. But also, the richer your experience of life is. The more words you know, the more you can assign your experiences to language and code it in your head, express it to others, and appreciate the stunning complexity and variety of life's wondrous offerings. I am going to explain some of the wondrous variety of life's offerings oh. by telling Ray and Everett mm. that you are indeed related, mm. just in the same way that Everett is related to our children. Mm -hmm. Everett, you are also related to Ray, Raiden, mm -hmm. who is my brother's child. There you go. You've so got you some go. sort of genetic similarities yes. happening in there. We're right. like cousins removed or some such. Okay. All right. Ask your dad. He has told me how to figure it out and I don't remember. And Whalen is related to you guys in a different kind yes. of more On tortured family way. Yes. Matthew side of the family. He, he bears no genetic relation to yes. you. But he is through marriage and agreements of social <laughs> consequence in some way related to you in a tortured way that I will not attempt to describe here. We don't actually understand it. Hello. I don't even know if there's a word for it. Hello. Hello. We did that. Viewer request for, for Matthew, Matthew theme song, song antics. antics. I'm not even sure I'm going to do this because we're what? running so We're already seven minutes behind. We're going to do that tomorrow. We're not seven minutes Tomo behind. We we're seven, seven minutes, minutes into oh. the joyous time yes, we are spending together. you have together. no idea what's coming your way. Really? So we're going tomorrow, what mm -hmm. we're going to do is you're going to tell Think me what sort antics of antics to do. And then post them tomorrow during the theme in the feed. But, yes. but to, right now we're not going to because someone was late. Someone because was... someone was too cavalier. And that's both of us. Drink water. Drink water. No day oh. is complete without water. Darn no it, matter how guys. far behind we are. What? I planned this. Chin chin. What? So what? that this was my water. Uh -huh. This was Matthew's water. I was going to drink less water than Matthew because mine had a bunch of ice in it. Uh -huh. And that means by water displacement, the science of water displacement, water. I was going to be drinking less water and there would just be ice cubes left in the bottom, but the ice cubes melted and now I have just as much water as Matthew. Oh, I see. You weren't going to consume the ice. You were no. going to use the ice as an excuse not to consume. I was consume. going to make it look like I was drinking yeah. the same right. amount of water as you. Robbie, get to it. I was being so clever. Have fortitude. It's I want you to drink this water here. with alacrity. Yes, which means enthusiasm. Ooh, do a cartwheel. You don't want Matthew to do a cartwheel. I that, will not a good idea. do a cartwheel inside this crowded studio. I would absolutely you know do it on the warm, warm grass. We will do it in the warm, warm grass, take a video, and we will um, show you tomorrow. That's some pretty big promises that you're making right there that I have not yet agreed to with any sort of alacrity. Um, drink water. 
Daily, what is that? Daily <laughs> Taylor Hamilton. Okay, <laughs> so I think I know what you're interested in here, and that you guys tune into this program exclusively to learn more about Taylor Ham, and I feel like I owe it to you to tell you more about Taylor Ham. So, today we'll answer the question, where did Taylor Ham originate? <laughs> While there are rumors of Union soldiers carrying pork rolls with them into the battlefields of the Civil what? War... The creation of the product was made official in 1856. Wow! According to every source, a state senator and well-known businessman by the name of John Taylor from Hamilton Square, New Jersey, originally named his product Taylor's Prepared Ham. Wow! Taylor was forced to omit the ham part of the name because it didn't meet the new definition of ham established by the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906. Wait, so what was it renamed? Not long. Will you please let me finish reading the paragraph? I'm not just making this stuff up. I'm citing a historical research. All right, all right. Not long after that, Taylor tried to protect his invention from competition by trademarking pork roll, but failed. Oh, good. Taylor pork roll persists as the state's most popular and most prevalent pork roll product. All right, Robbie, no questions. No questions, there's no time. Keep your questions. questions. Then do some research. (laughs) I have no answers, and I'm not going to entertain any questions. Um, What does that say? Share viewer submitted bear... Drawings. Do we have time for that? Do you have some viewer, viewer submitted bear drawings? Uh, just, Yesterday, Robbie taught you how oh, to draw a bear. Well, and some people were so inspired. I'm going to save that for tomorrow because okay. I didn't. But I do want to tell you that I took the directions for um, how to how draw, to draw bear. a bear, uh, and I turned them into just a little to um, an internet sensation. It's well, sweeping. Stop. Oh, okay. I just put it into like a little direction sheet yeah. that you can find. Uh, and I'll post the link in the in the sidebar. You over can here. download that thing, and you can make the weirdest you, looking bears you, just you want to. If you couldn't remember how it was done, yeah, you can just consult. You can also share it if you happen to have, say, Taylor Swift's Instagram account, like direct Taylor message. Taylor Swift does not send draw it to bears. Her. What are you no, talking no, about? But she could maybe share it with her millions of fans, including Matthew. Oh, I see. And then we would get it out into the world. We'd trend. How to draw bears trending. <laughs> we could hashtag How to draw bear. Guys, can you help us with that? All right. There we go. There Show, are the directions. What does that say? The link to the directions. Show, Show how none of them is quite as, oh, brilliant as Matthew's well, okay. I was not prepared to do all of this. Mm, I'm sorry. Robbie, you, the agenda has been available for cavalier. several hours. I was cavalier. Several I did not, hours. I did not look at the agenda. Read Matthew's story about bears. All okay. right. So, guys, there's lots of different kinds of stories. And I'm going to say that as I preface this story. Because in the past, I've told you that for stories, you need a main character. You need a conflict or a problem. You need an antagonist. You need some tension. This story has none of those things. It has no tension. It has no protagonist. It has no conflict. And it has no problem. It is a series of observations. There are some stories that are observations that are just beautifully illustrated. So this is that kind of story. This is a story that I wrote on June 23rd of 2011 Mm -hmm. and that Robbie at the time told me she liked. So we will see. And you know what? I couldn't help because I've become a better writer making a few tweaks. Oh. So it's not pure. It is a revised version of an old effort. All right. The original arc of it, it's a short story. There is actually a main character, but we don't spend much time with him. Okay. So here we go. Is it a bear? It is a bear. This is a story I googled in my computer, bear. Because why write a new story about a bear if you have an old story about a bear? Mm. I actually had three stories about bears. This was the most appropriate for today. You googled on your computer? I searched. I searched. There you go. It's a different thing. Actions for Robbie to illustrate. Oh. Actions for Robbie to Mm. illustrate. Um, All right. So I'm going to read the story. Yes. And what might suggest, Robbie, Uh is that you pick three episodes to sketch. Okay. Don't try to sketch them all. I'm going to read through it. Okay. And if you want to start sketching while I do, yeah. that's fine. But I think pick three of these episodes to loosely sketch. Well, should I listen to it first then? And then we're going to pick mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. and in the second show you can develop it. Okay? Okay. So we're going to do three quick sketches. Yeah, I can read this real quick, and okay. then you'll get a chance to do some drawings. Yes. So, it's called A Small Brown Bear. I want other people to also consider the things that they would like to see in this story. Okay, yeah. So if you have certain episodes yeah. that I read that you would like to see Robbie sketch... Write them over here. And you can either do that because you think they were beautiful or because you think they'd be difficult and you want to give Robbie a hard time. So, all right. A Small Brown Bear by Matthew Swanson. Oh. A small brown bear ate a big red fish near a wide green river. Up above was a round white sun against a flat gray sky. In the water were sneaky black seals and fast silver salmon. On the beach were bright orange agates, noisy white seagulls, and flopping flat flounders. 
On the water were tall metal boats with long, wet necks, nets on their decks. What? <laughs> nets. What are you nets. Robbie, don't interrupt. <laughs> I'm establishing a mood. I'm establishing a mood. Keep it to yourself. We can't interrupt the mood with your laughing. This is not a deck full of necks. Okay. <laughs> Can I draw yes. A Stop. boat with long, wet <laughs> necks on the deck. Splashing in the waves were hungry fishermen wearing bright orange raincoats and stiff yellow waders. On the sandy beach were big trucks with rumbling engines and swinging uh, cranes. Hanging from the cranes were heavy bags of fish. In the cabins on the bluff were tired fishers with heaping plates of steaming curry rice. On the tundra was a small brown bear full of fish and ready to sleep. Uh-oh, we freezed. We did. We froze. Says someone. Well. Says excellent connection, friends. Maybe that was on your end. Yeah, I don't hopefully know. it was on your okay, end. Okay, no, several people confirmed the freezing. Yeah. Are we back? Are, Are we, we back? back? All right, Robbie, so anybody, were there any of those episodes that you're particularly interested in seeing Robbie draw? Robbie, are there any episodes that you that I read that you're interested in drawing other than next on the deck? We're not going to do that. I do. Uh, I'm not going to say yet. I'll okay. wait for other people to weigh in. But I do want to point out yes. that this basically sounds like an early version of Sunrise Summer. In some ways it is, but it's all about the natural surround uh-huh. and not... But you're right. There are certain similarities between yeah. the episodes mentioned here. And mostly it's because I mean, it's the same subject it matter. captures it's what it's about our like time in Alaska. Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. But here was observations. How can we describe and make vivid with language some of the things we experience up there? What it looks like, what it smells like, um, what the animals are like, what the people are like, what the outfits are like. So... Anyway, do you need to hear it again? Do you, did you have a couple that you were particularly interested in? I mean, yeah. Any... I really liked the the flat the sun against the flat sky. Okay. Which is not a very exciting thing to draw. Hey, it's exciting if you feel it's exciting. Mm. Anything can be exciting, depending on how you represent it. So I think that if you feel that, let's put that one down, right? Um, Up okay. above was a round white sun against a flat gray sky. Now what's missing from that description is any sort of subject matter other than the sun. So the question is, Robbie, are you going to just create the sun, or are you going to put the sun in some sort of context? No, I mean, the bear is below the sun, right? The bear catching the fish? I mean, that was the previous episode, so you could put them together. What's the following episode? The following, in the water were sneaky black seals and fast silver salmon. Yeah, that's funny, because that's... that. Looks that in my head looks mm-hmm. just like the page from Everywhere Wonder mm-hmm. of Alaska mm-hmm. with the seals mm-hmm. and the jellyfish. Interesting, and this came before that too, so yeah. I like it. We've been wanting to make this book for a long time. Apparently, yeah. um, okay. Okay. So, All right. are you going to try to do that one? Well, so, read, a small read brown it all to bear me. ate a big red fish. Well, so maybe these three episodes together can just are, make are one going to be your drawing image. A small brown bear ate a big red fish near a wide green river. I'm going to cut myself off over here. Eating is a little bit gross, so maybe he isn't eating him. Maybe he just has him in his mouth. I don't want you guys to see my giant forehead. I love your giant forehead, Robbie. People are going to have to look at my relatively unkempt hair. So the way that I see this... A small brown bear ate a big red fish near a wide green river. Up above was a round white sun against a flat gray sky. And in the water were sneaky black seals and fast silver salmon. So oh, I'm going to show you. I've got a hole in my knee of my favorite oh, jeans, you Matthew. guys. Oh, ah. Matthew. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys a little bit how I Okay. Oh, are you going to take the... some texture? Well, I thought I might. So Robbie painted this texture that you're seeing, you guys, with actual paints, with an actual brush. And then we scanned it into the computer. So now it exists as a digital file that she can use however she wants to. And in books like Everywhere Wonder, and in all of the Bobbly books, a lot of the background shapes that you see are actually built out of shapes that she fills with these textures. And yeah. I think that's a little bit complicated. but. So I'll, I'll sort of show you how it works just okay. because I can. Okay. Um, so, for example, this is a, just a colored block. It can be any color that I want because I'm basically going to paste the watercolor texture over top of it, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, since it's just a rectangular block, it just looks like a rectangle. But say, for example, I cut a hole in this block to represent the flat sun. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to delete this. Mm -hmm. Oops, I deleted the wrong thing. Uh -oh. Delete that. Okay, that's Okay, gone. then. Oh! See? Cool. Then it just so, if I do any shape and delete it out of this layer. But then I can move the layer of watercolor around. It's just pasted into that window. It's a little hard to understand, but that's the basic gist. So, cool. Okay. Um, <clears throat> oops. See, now I'm getting myself confused. Okay, so there I see the flat, wet sun and the, what do I have, the bare? The flat white sun against a, a flat, uh, uh, sorry, a round white sun against a flat gray sky. Mm -hmm. And then we have a small brown bear ate a big red fish near a green wide river, a wide green river. Oh, I love that, Robbie. That's so cool. And look how Robbie made that look like clouds without even illustrating clouds. Right. Because she had this pre-existing wash. Yeah. Neat. Oh, there's the bear. There's oh, I like him in stark profile like that. Cool. And mm, I guess he's eating a fish. Ah, it's so beautiful. There we go. Okay. So that's one sketch. That's one, and we combine two of the statements to make one. With the, mm. the one with the sky and the one with the bear. What? Which, no? yes. And I, uh, if I, if I actually did this not on the computer, mm -hmm. um, I would sort of sketch these out and then have to paint around it. There's something called frisket, mm. which is like glue that you paint in the places that you don't want the paint to go over. It's like rubber cement. Well, I think actually some people use rubber cement as frisket. And you, I would paint this circle, then I would paint the watercolor, oops, I would paint the watercolor over top of it, and then I would peel off the rubber cement and it would leave a nice, crisp, white sun in the empty space. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe I'll do a demo of Frisket tomorrow. Frisket is such a funny name. It makes me think of Triscuits, which I want to I'm not sure, I'm I not sure eat. actually I have Frisket, because I don't actually use it very much. Is it Frisket, much. perhaps? And I not think it's Frisket, frisket. maybe. Okay. I don't know. All okay. right. All right, so what is the next? Were there any others that caught your mind? Um, uh, the tall metal boats with long, wet nets on their decks. Oh, right. Um, hungry fishermen wearing bright orange raincoats and stiff yellow waders. Big trucks with rumbling engines and swinging cranes. Um, tired fishermen with well, heaping plates of steaming curry rice. I mean, just for the funness of it. Okay, what? But it doesn't have a bear in the picture, isn't no, no. this? The bear's only at the beginning and the end. The bear it leads us into the story and takes us out of the story. Am but, I not supposed to draw a bear for this week? For this week's drawing? Um, I think for right now, what you should be focused on is studying okay. this so, story. So, um, the big rumbling trucks, mm -hmm. I think, is fun. Right. Um, it's just fun to draw big rumbling trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, what were the big rum rumbling trucks? Um, let's see. On the sandy beach were big trucks with rumbling engines and swinging cranes. Well, I happen to know what these trucks look like. That's helpful. But I don't know if it's helpful in this case. Why is that? Well, because... Is this supposed to be a realistic story, or is it... I think you have the luxury of this not having to be anything at all. Right? I think you've been given some words, so... and you can do with what them what you will, because you're the illustrator. So wouldn't it be fun to just draw big rumbling trucks? You guys are in charge right now. When you take on any sort of creative uh, challenge, you're in charge. You get to make the decisions. You get to decide what the world looks like, what the story is. It's one of the great things about being creative is nobody can tell you what to do. You Matthew are in charge. can tell you what to do. What's that? Robbie, Matthew can make helpful suggestions that improve the quality of your work. That, that's all. Rob, Matthew never tells you what to do. That's true. Matthew's a nice guy. Well, also, I know from past experience, you never tell Robbie what to do. You try to make a case for your point of view and hope that she agrees with you. So it's got cranes on it? Yeah. What does it have? Yeah. Um... On the sandy beach were big trucks with rumbling engines and swinging cranes. Hanging from the cranes were heavy bags of fish. I always think of cranes as being like this. We have completed all of the items in the agenda, so don't well, feel like you have any... all that rushing at the beginning? Well, you're only halfway through your second sketch here. So I, I think we're oh, exactly right on there a, too. a volume of sketch? So, um... Am I doing that video to some other time? What video is that? Of the bears? That's in the second show. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so here we go. You're just going to draw the front of the truck, or is the rest of it coming later? Mm, I guess the rest of it is coming later. Okay. 
Ah. So there are these big burlap bags, you guys. Actually, they're not burlap, but they look like burlap. They're actually made out of um, a synthetic plastic material that we fill full of fish while they're in a tote, which is like a huge Tupperware container, and that at each of the four corners, there's a heavy strap that we wrap around uh, a hook that hangs from the crane. Oh, whoops, I forgot to draw the hook. And then it, it picks is. up the, uh, the bag and weighs it. There's a scale. If this were a realistic drawing, oh, yeah, the bag would actually scale. be hanging further down from the crane, and there and would be, be a scale, scale up there. Because Here, the scale I'll, says how much it weighs. Are you going to move fix, it down? I'll fix yeah. that. There you go. There's the scale. And we get paid based on how many pounds of fish we sell. And an interesting thing is they weigh the whole thing, the fish and the bag, and then when we figure out how many pounds it is, they, re they take 10 pounds off because the bag itself weighs 10 pounds. That's they don't want to pay us. That's called the tear weight. That's called weight. the tear weight. Yeah. T-A-R-E. Every container that gets weighed has its own weight that gets removed from the equation. Oh, I like that, Robbie. Look how quickly the rest of the truck came into focus. I thought it was going to be harder than that or more time-consuming than that. Good work. Um, yeah. I do want to point out that when yeah. all the fish are up here, yeah. what happens? Oh, oh it's, it's a mesh bag, and so fish, slime, and blood get squeezed out, and we have to be very careful to be standing in the right place. You want to be standing upwind, not downwind. And you know why they make the bags like that, Matthew? To get that out so they don't have to pay for they the slime. They don't have to pay for yeah. the slime. They want the slime to come out because yeah. slime is heavy. Yeah. The more slime you have, the more you have to yeah. pay the fishermen. So. Yeah. Anyway, so that, good job. Robbie, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with you that you did that from memory and so quickly. Very nice. Hey, did you guys have any requests for a drawing that you would like Mott Robbie to do based on the story that we read? Any requests? Robbie, I have a request that you draw the cabin on the bluff. Okay? okay, so we have a sense here. We have a very sort of idealized and simplified drawing in profile. It's not realistic, but it's very sort of moving, right? It has a nice tone and environment. Then we have a fairly realistic drawing of a truck. Can you do something sort of in the middle where you create an environment out of these washes, maybe the background, but you draw the cabin and the bluff with line work so you saw how those two things go together? Mm-hmm. Oh, who's that? Is that you? Is that Alden? No, that's our, our fish buyer. Oh, what's her name? What's I can't her name? remember. I can't yeah. remember her name. Okay. Ku. Yeah, so Starts with like a that. C. Starts yeah. with a C. Yeah. For some reason, something I remember like that. that. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, so what am I doing? Um, did you save that? I did. Okay, I just turned good. off the layer. Um, on the ca in the cabins on the bluff were tired fishermen with heaping plates of steaming curry rice. But instead of drawing that, can we see the cabin on, on the, the bluff? bluff? Sort of at night, maybe. Okay. Okay. So we have a texture in the background that's the brooding night sky. We have the bluff that's a brooding texture. And then we have the, the cabin poking up with warm lights coming out of the windows. I like the sound of that. I'm asking a lot. You are I'm asking, asking a lot. lot. But Robbie, so far you have delivered because you are remarkable. <laughs> Stop it. No, it's true. You are. <laughs> you are. Um, all right, yes. so I'm do so we're doing the brooding sky. I'm gonna just do these washes, and I'm gonna. They're not. I just saved my black and white washes. Okay. I didn't use the colored washes. That's fine. Okay. I mean, this is mostly a demo, so we don't. This need to is create. absolutely a demo. I yeah. can't find the pattern that I'm looking for. Oh no. All right. Now oh, that'll work. Good. Oh, look at that! Look how she turns it sideways. I love it. Oh my gosh, look how that looks like the sky. That looks just like the sky in Alaska. Sort of flat, cloudy, gauzy. Mm, that's it. funny. I was going to make it. Yeah. I was going to make it bluish. Okay, cool. Is that okay? Sure. Or. The funny thing about Alaska, you guys, in the summer when we're there, is that it doesn't get dark until around midnight, and it doesn't get all the way dark until around 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning. And it never gets all the way dark because we're so far north at the angle of the sun makes the days really, really long. But during the winter, it makes the days really, really, really short. So I'm glad that we're not there in the winters. I'm someone who likes darkness, but if it were dark um, 20 hours a day, I, can't I think it would be imagine. hard. I can't imagine. I think it would be, be very hard. hard. So are you creating the surf there? Is that, oh, the beach. The There's beach. the beach. Look at that. And then the water. Oh, my gosh. This is amazing. Robbie, it's amazing. I never get to watch Robbie work because Robbie doesn't like to be watched. <laughs> so this is really a pleasure for me. This is just me tricking Robbie into letting me watch her work. Oh, 
There's the water. Okay. Okay. So. Yes. And then there was a cabin. What oh, was happening? Cabin. Um, yeah, don't even worry about what the language says. It's really the cabins on the bluff where tired fishers were heap, eating heaping plates of steaming curry rice. I mean, I've basically drawn this before in Sunrise Summer. I, but, right? But do you know what didn't happen before? What? I, did, I didn't get to You watch. didn't get to watch. Yes. <laughs> so I... <laughs> I may have been presenting you with a scenario with which you were sufficiently familiar. I see. The challenge would be somewhat lessened by familiarity. Oh, look at that. Look at that little cabin up there. Can you give me a, a window or two? I'm giving you some, some nice glowing yeah. front windows. Nice. There's something very powerful about windows, you guys. Windows are like the eyes of buildings. See how much that makes it feel like a place that's inhabited just so cozy and starts to tell you a story there's a story because if you have lights on inside a house someone is there who turned the lights on someone is in there using the lights all of a sudden what had been a very impersonal landscape became something that had humans involved and that has a story attached to it so i really love that um i don't have anything that i think will make a good grassy no I bet she's just Texture. setting you up for disappointment, and then she's going to, boom, make it look amazing. That is my guess. Um, that is a classic Robbie Bear strategy, setting low expectations, and then, boom! That is. Yes. I do like to set low yeah, expectations. Uh, <laughs> Robbie is so good at drawing, says Loving Fox YouTube. What do you think, Robbie? <laughs> I oh, and then we have others greeting Loving Fox, saying, are you new to the show? <laughs> um, all right, let's see. We, uh, why can't we barely see Robbie's face? Robbie, bring your face in. Loving Fox YouTube wants to see you. I just want to tell you that the Loving reason... Fox YouTube, Robbie likes I moved, to hide. I moved me over, but here's what happens. There she is. When I'm drawing, I lean forward, and all you see is like your my forehead giant forehead. Your forehead is so beautiful. We love your forehead, Thanks. Robbie. Thanks so much. You can get rid of Matthew. Nobody wants to see Matthew No, right now. Matthew's okay. doing the good commentary. Welcome, Loving Fox YouTube. Welcome to the Robbie. <laughs> Robbie and Matthew Story Hour, you are most welcome here. Thank you for joining us, for checking in. All right. Um, yes. I'm st now I'm looking for something that looks like water. Okay. Oh, Robbie's this... setting low expectations. There's nothing. Oh, that looks like you're looking that right down like... on the surface of a pond. Yeah, that looks like that. clouds a little bit. Yeah, I'm afraid and the that's angle the right of that one. is wrong. That feels like you're looking sideways yeah. at something or straight down at something. Maybe this. Okay. Ooh, I and think that that'll do sort it. of water. Yeah. So Robbie has all these textures, and she has to pick ones that match most closely with the things she's trying to represent. So these and are guys, actually... Oh, the show is over. Oh, dear. The show is over. And guys, just so you know, Robbie would usually spend hours, if not days, on a drawing like this. So the fact that she's doing these so quickly is kind of amazing. Yes. Let's give her a round of applause. Oh, thanks. And Loving Fox YouTube, <laughs> especially since you're new, we're going to start a new stream now. Yes. For the second show, which in which we'll read a, a different book. So go back to the Robbie and Matthew YouTube page and pick the Real McCoys stream, which is set to start at 1.30, which is a minute and a half ago. Yes. I hope Sorry. we don't lose you. Find right. us. The, go to YouTube. Look for Robbie and Matthew oh, and pick the stream. Okay? Uh, okay. Everyone else, we'll see you over there. Well, we're going to see everybody. We'll and see everybody. Loving Fox YouTube, because yes. Loving All Fox right. YouTube is coming Yay. over there. Goodbye, right. friends. We'll Bye see guys. you in a minute. Bye.